stick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling. All right, joining me right now, back with me once again, is undefeated UFC middleweight. Puna Soriano, yes, Puna sir. man, we were just talking about it earlier. You've been through a hell of a year. Just uh, mm -hmm. recap uh, us on what's been going on with you. Um, yeah, you know, um, just a quick recap. Uh, I was battling through a couple injuries uh, throughout the year. Um, rough 2020, just like everyone else. But now um, I feel good. You know, I feel healthy. Um, still battling. Um, just some things my body's still not used to, you know, mm -hmm. but um health wise I, I have no excuses i'm i'm 100 healthy um just working on crafting everything you know getting everything perfect going through all of that you had covid the pandemic hit you know shutting everything down then you had the concussion issues then you had mm -hmm. the injury man it's just like back to back back to back adversities going yeah. on how was it handling all of that everything man it must have been very frustrating yeah, I'm not gonna lie. There's there's times in there where it really sucked. Um, I remember just like being mad as like everyone, um, my girlfriend, my dogs, my friends, just like didn't want to see anybody and stuff. They don't talk to nobody. Everyone would make me upset. But I don't know. <laughs> just somehow, some way, just will through it. Um, even on days. I didn't like want to. I just somehow <laughs> forced my way to practice, forced my way to do what I had to do, and somehow I made it here. <laughs> With the the injuries and the concussion issues, how did you keep yourself from actually getting back in there too early? Because fighters, man, they're fighters. They don't really yeah. like to listen to anybody, really. You know, no, even yeah, the doctors. for sure, for sure. Um, but for me, concussions, like the brain is one thing I don't play around with at all. Like. Um, if I've got something going on with it, I'm, I'm, I don't even chance it. I just sit on the sideline. That's no problem for me. And as far as like, uh, my hip, I, that's another one. I, I couldn't do anything. I was just like basically stuck in bed when I could walk. I was basically inching along, literally like inching along. And, um, they kind of forced me to stay out. I couldn't really do anything at all. So, <laughs> Was the PI pivotal for you with the concussions and, and the hip to kind of rehab you properly? Yeah, for sure. For sure on the concussion. Um, on on the hip, we still kind of unclear um, on like what really happened. Um, just how strange it was. It like was kind of overnight. I just woke up in the middle of the night with crazy pain in my hip. Um, but yeah, um, they've set me on like all the right appointments doing all the physical therapy um keeping me on track keeping me accountable and it's really nice to have all those guys at the pi you know yeah and and i feel like that's one of the reasons why a lot of the fighters have been moving to las vegas or or either visiting las vegas more frequently mm -hmm. nowadays to train sure. and take advantage of that how has it been with it being congested it seems like is it congested like there's a lot of people there yeah. a lot of fighters yeah um it's a it's a good and I don't know it's however you look at it like I think it's cool to see like I'm still a fan of fighting as well and it's still cool to see all these people passing by and all that um but it, it's kind of rough sometimes because um having so much events um in a row like we're not allowed there uh past a certain amount of time and just sometimes it's impossible for us to get treatment times or stuff but um yeah either way you look at it it's kind of good and kind of bad i don't know you know you said you had some frustration and every time i speak mm -hmm. with you and every time i see you like on anything you're so positive how do you keep <laughs> this up man how do you do it uh i don't know that's just me um that's how my dad is mm -hmm. my dad's always smiling always laughing um i don't know i genetics I, I, yeah you could say that i'm not always like this um <laughs> I don't know, just happen to catch it on camera a lot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, you know, like you going back to the perks of uh, having so many fighters come through is to have more looks in the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, who have you worked with Definitely. in the past six months? Um, past six Well, honestly, I really haven't been able to do anything in, except for the last maybe 12 weeks, maybe. That's how hard everything was for me. But um, guys that came through the gym – um eric anders for sure um ian heinish it was cool to train with him um most recently there's this dude armand ospinoff uh i hope i said his last name right crazy 
um, somewhere around the Russian area, like scariest dude. Everyone in the gym is like scared of him, you know, just doing these crazy spinning moves. But uh, he's a nice guy, good training partner, and it's uh, it's been nice to have have him around. So he he's been one of your main guys for this upcoming fight. Oh heck no! I avoid him any chance <laughs> I can. <laughs> he's too dangerous. I'm trying to make it to the fight. Okay, okay, <laughs> all right. So is there is so that could be a that could be something that comes up from now and then, right? In the training room, it's like some guys they're just too too wild, so to say. So when you're preparing for a fight, you can't take those chances. Oh, for sure. I'm I'm really picky. Um, mm-hmm. in fight camp, uh, my kind of. Me and my coaches work together. We figure out the the exact guys we want, the looks we want, and we try to stick to that as close as we can. Um, and yeah, outside of camp, I, it doesn't matter. I'll go with anyone, you know. Francis sometimes, but you know. <laughs> How is it sparring Francis? Do you grapple with them too? Uh, I mean, by grapple, like I just jump on his back when he's not looking, because otherwise, <laughs> I, I really have no chance. You know, he's he's a freak. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. No. Um so you you said you kind of handpick your your guys that you work with. Who mm-hmm. have been the guys you handpick? Um I've been going with Brad a lot, um mm-hmm. Maki, Ryder Newman, Montel Williams, um who else have been Nate Pettit, he's also my coach. Um I don't know, I go with him literally every sparring session. Um my friend Dylan uh, I think it's probably nah, that's about it. That's about it. Brad, he's he hasn't fought in a while, man. I wonder how he's looking. Yeah. No, he, he's sharp. He's actually fighting uh the following the following week after mine, yeah. and um yeah. he's looking good, man. It's dangerous. It's yeah. it's really nice actually having us, you know, kind of fighting so close to each other because like we just both keep rising and keep getting better as you know the weeks progress. Yeah, I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing him get back in mm-hmm. there and and compete. For sure. Um, now your opponent coming up, Dosko Todorovic, undefeated prospect like yourself. What mm-hmm. is your breakdown mm-hmm. of him? Um, I think he's good. Obviously, he's undefeated. I think he's got good skills everywhere. Um, and from some of the footage I see, he's also like a dog. Like he's not afraid to get in there and fight. Um, I think it's gonna be a good fight. I'm ready to you know meet what he has and and bring more. Just stay on him and just try to break him like everyone else. Break and finish him. Do you see a lot of you? in his style um yes and no there's some mm-hmm. stuff i i think we're similar at but mm-hmm. some stuff we're, we're different at um i don't know he he uh, i don't know how to explain mm-hmm. it they're just different mm-hmm. differences i guess all right now you have 13 months between fights what have you improved upon the most do you believe do you think it's the mental side the striking the ground the strength what is it um honestly i haven't had much of a opportunity to to work on anything um i I tried to watch a lot of film as much as i could um throughout my injuries and stuff but i don't know uh nothing in particular just uh, every day just getting better as a person honestly getting better as a fighter getting healthy as a person and yeah I, i there's really nothing so basically, your focus has just been on becoming healthy so you can fight. Yeah. Yeah, basically. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, you, we know you got skills. You know what I mean? You yeah, showed that sure. before. So it's not like, sure. you know, we, we're we not. It's like a mystery what you bring to the table. But yeah, yeah. the health is a is a major factor. I'm glad that you are healthy and, and ready to go. Yeah. What about Fire Island? Are you looking forward to traveling over there? Um, As far as the travel itself, so so you know um we'll, we'll see what it's like the experience but uh, i don't like being cooped up for too long and that flight might be a little rough but as far as being there um, i'm sure i'm gonna enjoy every every second of it especially with like uh the way fight weeks work with the ufc they're awesome man they take really good care of you they treat you like a i don't know like you're a celebrity yeah and i, I believe it's the 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 conor mcgregor fight week too so it must feel yeah, different yeah, yeah. Um, wait, I think, is he the following? Yeah, it's like a, like a week later, but what I've heard from other fighters is that you guys fly out after the, the 20th card. So, Mm. so I I guess you'll be there. Yeah, I guess I'll be there. Whatever. (laughs) I'm here to, along for the ride, enjoy everything. For sure. That's just more motivation to win if I have to stay that long. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) 
where you know you you know you could play on the island i guess afterwards yeah for sure well you know how do you see this fight playing out do you do you see a vintage performance from you the same we've always seen yeah um i'm planning the same thing um i, I want to own the octagon the octagon is going to be mine i'm gonna you know keep the pressure on him make my hands land work the kicks in and if he wherever he wants to bring it i'm ready i'm ready to take it to the ground i'm ready to keep it standing um i always want an exciting finish so that's what i'm after all right january 16th ufc fight island 7 abu dhabi puna man it's always good speaking with you and uh, i hope to <laughs> yes, see sir. you man in the cage like four times this year is that is that what you uh, want to do yeah for sure um yeah, I, I want to play catch up. I want to make up for lost times. Um, I really wanted to be the dependable guy throughout this pandemic, which kind of sucked. But I'm glad my friends got to be that person. Um, a lot of fight, other fighters got to be that person. So it was kind of cool to watch that and kind of like be inspired by it. No matter what, man, you bring the thunder and I look forward to seeing <laughs> that. So, man, all the best to you and, and staying healthy and everything that's going on in your life. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Take a move in the rain. You can hit me.